Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first video in a series on using class notebooks from Microsoft. Uh, basically, class notebooks is just one note for the classroom. It's I will talk more about that in future videos. That is not the the topic of this video. This video is going to be on common questions I get from students when using Class Notebook. It's a great tool, wonderful, love it, use it all the time, but there are five little things that tend to come up from time to time, and I thought I would try and nip them in the bud before they get going for you as well. So let's start off with um, the view we're in right now. So in Class Notebook, um, there's different sections and there's different things you can do and then students can go in and it's like they can type in stuff or insert things but sometimes they'll email me and say teacher teacher can't get in can't type uh, help me help me probably one of two things so let's start off with the easy one if you'll notice here along the uh, the menu bar up here it's pretty sparse why because it's in reading mode so we need to get out of reading mode if we want to edit so you have to click on the edit notebook edit in browser and Voila, now we can edit. I can actually go in here and I can type something and I can insert stuff. And you'll notice that the menu bar has now changed. That's usually the problem because what's happened is when they log in um, on their browser, it just goes into reading mode. So I, I try and make sure my students all know that at the beginning that they shouldn't use reading mode, make sure they should edit, edit in browser and they can go back in. Now, could be something else as well. Sometimes what I'll do is, so when I distribute homework to my students, they have a homework folder and I'll distribute a page to them in OneNote, which means they get a copy of it in everybody's folder, homework folder. And um, students, I'll tell them, go to your homework folder, do your homework. Sometimes students will delete that by accident. And so I put a copy in the content library as well. But the content library has an interesting thing. Um, students can view it, can copy stuff from it, but they cannot edit the page. And so what ends up happening sometimes is students aren't thinking clearly. They go to the assignments folder in content library and they try and edit that fo that page and uh, that's not going to work. So what they need, I just email back when I email, like they can't get in. Uh, I just send them off a quick note. Hey, check edit. If not, make sure you're in your homework folder. Everything should be good. All right. So that's the first one. They can't type. They can't do anything. Number two. I can't find the pages on my phone. What's probably happened in that particular case is they're using the browser function. Uh, they're, they're logged in using the browser on their phone in OneNote. OneNote has a great app for both iOS and Android, but um, on, in the app, or if, if you're not using the app, if you're using the browser, it's, uh, it's not as good. I mean, there's obvious reasons why. It's just a very small screen. It doesn't work very well. So what will happen is students who in class, this often happens in class because we'll use it in class as well too. Um, they get this and they say, I can't find my section. I can't find the content library. I can't find anything. Um, that's because you need to switch from portrait mode to landscape mode. And voila, there's the menu. Now you can type in stuff. Okay. So um, I often tell them just if they're going to use the browser mode, uh, then make sure they're in landscape mode. All right. So that's the second one. The third one is I finally convinced them to install the app on their phone. Finally. Uh, and so they install it on their phone and they get there and they say, teacher, help me out. I can't find our class on OneNote. Well, there's a little bit of a quirky thing. It turns out that uh, it's not straightforward. When they first get here, they get notebooks and it shows them the notebook that they have. And then it says more notebooks. And if they click on more notebooks, it shows a list of recent ones. And students can't find it there because they haven't opened it yet. So what I do is on the very first day of class, I have everybody log in through the browser log in, get onto Class Notebook. Once they've logged in the Class Notebook there, then it will show up here in Recents, and then they can add it to their, their app. And once it's added to their app, it's easy and straightforward. Now, the thing about uh, getting them to log in the first time, there's one other thing, and that is if they're in OneNote, so we go to the OneNote page, um, it always shows recent first. And so if a student's going there for the very first time, they're not going to find it because they have not gone there yet. So they need to go to class notebooks first. And once they're in class notebooks, it'll show up there. They can find it, they can click on it. Then it will appear in recents here, and then it will appear in recents here. So that's the sec uh, basically the, the third thing. Uh, fourth thing, what are we gonna look at? Well, um, I often get students who I say, I tried, I was trying to insert an audio, like they're doing pronunciation recording. Can't insert audio, don't understand what's happening. 
Nine times out of 10, it's because they have the cursor in the menu or in the title bar. If they're in the title section, you'll notice something. Under insert, everything's grayed out. As soon as I click below, now I can insert stuff. So that's one of the easy ones to solve usually. Um, and then the last thing is I get an email from students that are saying, ah, help, I've deleted a whole section I was typing. I accidentally did something and that's gone. All right, so how do we solve that? No problem. I tell them, stop, don't add anything else to their page. Click on view and then go to page versions and you'll see below the page, you'll see when things have been edited on that page. They can click through and find the one that they like, the most recent one with that information, all of the things in there, and they can click on the yellow bar and hit restore and boom, they're back to normal. It'll still keep a copy of all the old ones as well too. Now, the history thing only works in chunks, so if they're typing a lot, like a whole paragraph, um, they once they stop and pause for a little bit, it will save a version of that. Um, so what you want to make sure is that um, they haven't been doing a ton of work, but once they go through the history, they should be able to find it, restore it, and everything will be good. So hope that helped you. Um, if you do have any other questions, comments, suggestions about this, let me know. I'm going to do a series of these class notebook videos, hopefully nice short little ones with some tips and some tricks and some ideas since I've been using it for a while now. Uh, but if you have any questions about it, please let me know. And please subscribe so that you'll get the latest uh, videos when I post them. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.